Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I've got a guide for all eight assault weapons that you will unlock on your way to rank 20 for the assault class. I'll be going over things like the best specialization tree for each gun, what situation you want to use each one in, and also which ones you may want to save your company coin for. Also at the end I'll kind of go over which one I think is the best. Starting off in the order that you acquire these weapons, we have the Sturmgewehr 1.5. Every assault player starts off with a fully upgraded Sturmgewehr 1.5, and once you get this weapon to rank 4, you can re-specialize the gun to better suit your needs. It has a 670 round per minute rate of fire, a 4-shot kill in close quarters, and a detachable magazine for fast reload. This weapon does a lot of damage in close to medium range combat. In fact, it's one of the closer range assault weapons and it's a very good starting gun. You can use it in many situations. It's highly versatile, but later you might want to start pushing the engagement distances of your assault class out a bit further. And that's where the Sturmgewehr 1.5 starts to fall short a little bit. When you get this weapon up to rank four, I would recommend re-specializing it for quick aim, ported barrel, custom stock, and recoil buffer. This will result in the best aim down sight accuracy and extend the effective range of this weapon. It's already very good in close quarters. I don't think it needs too much help with its hip fire accuracy. For the most part, you're gonna to want to ADS and this will just give it a more versatile place on the battlefield. This weapon does the second highest DPS out of all the assault weapons in the game. And it's also got a pretty substantial magazine again with that fast reload. So this is a very very versatile, close to medium range assault weapon, and you'll be happy using this gun all the way from rank one up to rank 20 through the assault class. When it comes to optics, you can either use this reflector sight or you can just stick with the iron sights, which are also very usable, whichever you prefer, but I don't think going magnified really makes too much sense with this weapon. If you want something with a bit more accuracy or to finesse a specific engagement range, you'll have to look elsewhere. Moving on, the second assault weapon is the Gewehr 43. This is a very well-rounded medium to long range semi-auto rifle. It's got a 300 round per minute rate of fire, a three shot kill at its ideal engagement range, which can actually be lessened to a two shot kill if you mix a headshot in there. And it's got 10 rounds to go through before you need to reload. It does, however, have the option for a detachable magazine that'll allow you to carry 11 rounds and a faster reload. But I wouldn't recommend going down that side of the progression progression tree and I'll tell you why right now. Going down the right side of the progression tree will give you high velocity bullets for hitting moving targets and then the next two unlocks are custom stock and light and stock allowing you to aim down sight and side strafe uh, quicker and more accurately which is really important for not getting shot in return and putting down accurate fire. Those things in my opinion are more important than a faster reload. And then at the end you can choose between recoil buffer and barrel bedding. I prefer recoil buffer, just the reduced uh, vertical recoil I think is a little bit more important, but you can play around with it and see which one that you like the best. Optic wise to me it only makes sense to go with the three times here. You want to be engaging at those longer range engagement distances. The optic will kind of force you into that playstyle if you forget the actual purpose of this rifle. You can use this certainly with iron sights, you can use it with any sort of lesser magnified optic as well if you want to play it more aggressively, but generally speaking this weapon is designed to be used at medium to long range distances, so you may as well equip an optic that's going to help you out there. It'll also help you get those headshots at further ranges, lowering your kill shot to two. I like the Gewehr 43 a lot. I recommend using it on maps where you can control your engagement distance better at further ranges. Places where guys aren't going to sneak up on you and engage you at 10 meters or closer, that's where this weapon's going to suffer. So it's very good at longer range combat. There are some semi-auto rifles that are geared a bit more towards close quarters. This is not one of them. So pick it if you want to counter snipe, if you want to take out those snipers at long range, if you want to counter prone machine gunners in the distance or just have the advantage at further range combat. Next up, we have the M1A1 Carbine, which is quickly becoming a fan favorite. This weapon is good before you even rank it up. The recoil is so little, you can put so many shots downrange perfectly accurately that your targets will be dead before they even realize what's happening. It's listed at 450 rate of fire, and that means you can pretty much spam fire as fast as you can pull the trigger. So if you're a high skill player with the ability to spam fire as fast as possible and aim for the head, 
then you're gonna like this gun. You will get rewarded for your skill with the M1A1. One could even make the case that this weapon is potentially overpowered in the right hands just because of its insane accuracy and lack of recoil. When it comes to specializing this weapon, I went full right side of the tree. This is not a definite way to go with this gun. You can mess around with it a little bit, but the idea here is that I felt this made it the best for engaging targets at sort of medium range engagement distances, hence using the magnified optic here. It allowed me to track targets the best, but also kind of dance around while shooting and get the generally best accuracy. If I wanted to spec it a bit more for hip fire, um, I could have changed it up at the end of the tree, but I felt like the high velocity bullets were better for tracking moving targets. Now, if you're not a fan of spam firing as fast as possible, this is probably not the weapon for you. Next up, we have the close quarter powerhouse of the assault class. This is the M1907 SF. It's got a 770 round per minute rate of fire, a four shot kill in close quarters, but only a 20 round magazine. So that's where it's held back. It's magazine size. You can't shoot through an entire squad with one mag. You can get one to two people, usually in a good situation, and then you gotta reload. Luckily, it's got a fast reload, so if you can set yourself up with some cover, duck behind real fast, reload, you can engage and almost certainly beat out the next person in a one-on-one -on -one firefight. It's got some of the best damage on the battlefield for close quarter combat, and if that's what you know you're getting into, then this is a sure choice. Using a little bit of burst fire effectively, you can extend the range of this weapon as well. It's not your ultimate medium range assault rifle by any means, but you'd be surprised by who you can take out and at what ranges. This is a nasty weapon and should be feared by all. When it comes to specializing this weapon, you gotta go right side of the tree. I mentioned that it's got a 20 round magazine. Well, that's only if you go right side of the tree. The rest of it gives you better aiming down sight accuracy while moving and stuff like that. Uh, if you go left side, it'll give you better hip fire accuracy, which I don't think you really need to spec this gun for. When it comes to optics, I think this little reflector sight is more than adequate. Irons are cool, but I felt for just the quick target acquisition and close quarter combat, this one was more than adequate, even with the slightly darker sight picture. I, I like this one a lot for this gun. Next up, we're going back to the realm of semi-auto rifles with the Turner SML lead. This is a fun rifle. I gravitated towards it right away. I don't know what it is. It just fits my play style. It's kind of between the M1A1 and the Gewehr 43. Faster rate of fire than the Gewehr, slower than the M1A1, uh, engagement distance right between the two of them, and that just kind of felt right for me. Sort of a medium longish range rifle. It, it has a lot of versatility to it and it can be specialized with the progression tree to sort of fit your needs a little bit better depending on what you want from it. For the progression tree, I've danced around with this weapon quite a bit, trying out different styles for it. Ultimately, this is what I'm using right now. I've got the quick aim at the top, and then we've got better accuracy while moving on the right side and detachable magazines, and then I come back around for the recoil buffer. This gave me sort of the best of everything. The detachable magazine allows you to reload quickly. I was using 20 round mags a lot, but I felt like the added accuracy while moving was a little more more important and I reload a lot just by habit so detachable magazines seem to work a little better. I actually enjoyed messing around with this progression tree a lot and enjoyed both sides of it but this is what I'm using right now. I also messed around with three times and iron sights on this. This gun actually has some pretty usable iron sights if you want to go more aggressive with it. It is a fun gun to use for aggressive play. The only problem is that there's probably better weapons out there if you are going specifically for an aggressive play style. Again, it's very adaptable. So if you like using irons at longer ranges, you absolutely can. And then it gives you a decent aggressive sight as well. I ultimately went for the three times optic and decided to sort of spec it more for an adaptable medium long range rifle. I just like it. It feels like it's good in most situations. I can on the fly use it in close quarters, on the fly use it at long range. It's probably one of my favorite assault weapons. It's honestly hard to go wrong with the progression tree on this one and it's hard to go wrong with the engagement distances. Medium range, long range, you can really just push this gun into just about any category that you want. And you know how I feel about versatile weapons. I absolutely love them and this one is super versatile for a semi-auto rifle. 
but really the award for king of versatility has to go elsewhere. The STG-44, the gun that pissed everybody off in the beta of this game for being too darn good. It did get a nerf, but uh, it's still very, very effective. Putting a three times optic on here and you can tap fire this thing like it's a semi-auto rifle. You can counter snipe with it at range and it's still got a respectable 600 round per minute rate of fire for close quarter combat. The STG-44 is still, in my opinion, the king of the assault weapons. The most versatile weapon that you can take into any combat situation and still have a good time. There's no map that I would not recommend using the STG-44 on, but if you know that you're going to exclusively be fighting at extreme ranges, then maybe it's not your ideal choice. And if you know you're going to be exclusively fighting at extreme close ranges, then no, it's not your ideal choice. There's better guns for the two extremes, but when it comes to versatility, this gun can still do really well in all situations. And sometimes that's the most important benefit to have is you don't exactly always know what you're going to be running into in Battlefield. It's a highly unpredictable game, and that's what the STG-44 is built for. It has the slowest rate of fire of the assault rifles, but the highest rate of fire compared to a semi-auto rifle. So it really is sort of that in-between weapon there, and it can do the best of both worlds. When it comes to specializing this weapon, the right side tree feels like the obvious choice, at least till you get to the tier four. And then you can choose for either recoil buffer or improved accuracy while aiming and moving. I went for the improved accuracy. I felt like I could control the recoil pretty well, but if you have a hard time with the recoil, then definitely go for the recoil buffer. Also, you certainly don't have to use a three times optic on here, but I find the three times magnified optic so versatile in this game. I can use it for close quarters and medium range that it just seems to fit the best with the STG-44. I did use this weapon a lot with iron sights initially, and it's good there, but the three times just allows me to do a little bit more work at further ranges. Moving on, we have the Sebs Ladder 1916, which is a slower rate of fire semi-auto rifle. It, by default, has a 225 round per minute rate of fire, but you can upgrade this depending on what progression tree you pick to 257 round per minute rate of fire. This gun has a huge magazine. You can hold 26 shots at a time. It really is the ultimate plinker rifle. If you want to sit sort of behind the front lines and plink away at your enemies at a distance, take out multiple targets before you need to reload, it's a great surveyor weapon. You can engage. You can see what the enemy's up to. You don't have to unzoom. You don't have to reload you can just plink away and uh, take down many many targets the downside is that the dps is low it's got good damage per shot but you're still going to need to three shot a full health target at range so you could look at it as like the ultimate noob killer if you're up against targets that aren't shooting back or you're good enough at uh, engaging targets before they see you then you're not going to have to reload a lot and you can kill the most people with one magazine out of any DMR available. But if you're up against really good opponents who are shooting back and are being very effective this may not be your weapon of choice. Personally, I did not like the Sebs Ladder 1916. Just the rate of fire was too slow for me. And it just kind of reminded me of the Battlefield 1 variant of this weapon that kind of fit the same role. And it's it's just not my playstyle. It might be your playstyle, though. If you like to kind of skulk around the battlefield and peek corners slowly and kind of take shots at people from further ranges then go for it but this is not a versatile weapon it is objectively the last assault gun that you want in close quarter combat at long range combat you can make do with the Gewehr 43 even the turner smle this one could be seen as one of the better long range rifles just because of its massive magazine and good damage per shot but personally i think if i was going for extreme distance shooting i'd still prefer the Gewehr 43 because it's a little bit more versatile when specializing this weapon, I went for the high velocity bullets at the start and then full right side tree down below that. This allowed me to get faster moving bullets, but then also the ability to maintain my accuracy while strafing left and right. That's just an important part of the way that I play a lot. Um, I like to move around when I shoot, and so if a weapon loses its accuracy when doing so, I get frustrated. So that's why I went for that route. You could go for the higher rate of fire. 
um, and try and get the better DPS and make it a slightly more versatile rifle. But I figured why not play this gun to its strengths, which is long range uh, and accurate. And so that's what I spec it for. Um, and it's okay. But again, it's not really my play style. And then finally, we have the Assault's Rank 20 weapon. This is the Gewehr 1.5. Looks pretty similar to the Sturm Gewehr 1.5, doesn't it? Well, it's basically the same gun, but with a semi-auto mode only. This is an aggressive semi-auto rifle. It's got a 30 round magazine. You can absolutely put down a ton of people before you need to reload. Um, and you can use it on close quarter maps, but it can also extend its range out to medium range pretty effectively, long range in a pinch. Again, this is gonna be a high skill weapon because of its slower rate of fire at 360 rounds per minute. You're gonna to need to land your shots to get those kills, but you're only gonna to need to land three shots in close quarters. A lot more at further ranges, but uh, this is a beast of a weapon. If you got the skill to back it up, you can absolutely dominate servers with it. Um, and it's nice to have a weapon with this kind of accuracy. You can either put uh, irons on this, you can use the reflector sight, you can use the three times sight. It's versatile in, times, in terms of the scopes. Um, and I would recommend just putting an optic on that it seems to be more map appropriate. What ranges do you think you're gonna be engaging people at most? All right, put an optic on for that specific range. For specializing the gun, the choice for me was very clear just to go full right side of the tree to give me lesser recoil and as good of accuracy as possible. I was going to be aiming down sights as much as possible. If you want to hit fire a weapon, then use a different class or use a different gun. This probably isn't the weapon you want to be hit firing everybody with, but it is, it's fun to use. I'm not a huge fan of aggressive semi-auto rifles, but I can't deny that I was tearing it up with this gun and having a good time doing so. It's definitely not the most versatile semi-auto rifle out there and shouldn't be used on extremely long range maps. You'll probably just frustrate yourself. It does feel like it's got a slower muzzle velocity too for hitting those moving targets. So those are the eight assault weapons that you will get from the normal progression tree. There's gonna be more assault weapons added to the game later and I'll put links down below if you wanna see my reviews of those weapons when they come out. But uh, my top picks right now would be the STG-44 for a full auto weapon. It's highly versatile. It's good in any situation in any map. And then the Turner SMLE for the semi-auto rifles. Now the Turner SMLE is highly personal. A lot of people like the Gewehr 43. Some people want to be more aggressive like the M1A1. I just personally like the Turner SMLE for its engagement distance. And the same could be said with the STG-44. I think DICE did a pretty decent job of balancing out the weapons in the specific classes themselves where none of them are gonna stand out way beyond the other ones. Now, if you want super aggressive rifles, the M1907 is just an absolute beast in close quarters and won't give your opponents a chance to fire back. If you want nasty, accurate, high rate of fire weapons, the M1A1 uh, is going to be a favorite for a high skilled player. But if you're going through the progression tree and you're trying to save some company coin, maybe not ranking up every single one of the assault weapons, I would definitely pick one or two of the semi-auto rifles to rank up and maybe not work on the other ones. I think the Turner SMLE is a good bet, the Gewehr 43 or the M1A1, depending on how aggressive you wanna go with your semi-auto play. Usually people know what they like from an, a semi-auto rifle if you wanna be a very aggressive semi-auto rifle player. Uh, otherwise, you don't really need to rank them all up. There's a lot of them and they all kind of do very similar things. So figure out the one that you think might fit your play style the best. Again, the Turner SMLE is my recommendation. And save your company coin for vehicles or other things as you're progressing your character up until you know that you have enough that you can unlock and rank up all the assault weapons. I hope you guys found this guide useful. I will be doing guides for the other weapons. I already have the support one done. You can check the links in the video description down below to find links to the other guide videos. And I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off. Thank you.